Uh, so we're making progress on the install here uh, So I'm putting together all the clips as best as I can. Um, this is the first set that went up already um, I'm actually working on It's really windy guys The new wind turbine is putting out um, roughly between a thousand to 1800 watts currently right now depending on the wind so it's doing great um, so here's the little sorry guys. It's so windy um, So we're building I'm building the next set of um, Vertical pipe post that's getting set into concrete as you guys can see I have my um, truck here so last night in the evening it was really bad weather it was um, Not raining real hard, but it was raining and I ended up um, concreting this one in this one took three quarters of a truckload of gravel and of course I'm mixing it with cement so I'm making my own concrete right it's, it's the cheaper way to go um, but I am de I, this is all I have left out of all the gravel and everything so that hole over there took a lot of concrete I mean the hole was really big these holes are six feet deep into the ground the pipe is also going six feet into the ground so it's a very solid um, you know point so like the ones over here that you see right there they're the same way they're going six feet in the in the ground and they're all concreted in and with this high winds you can't even see this you can't even see it moving not even a bit not even a bit because it is so solid in the ground so um, I'm working on this section here so I just removed my brackets so I want to share something with you guys. I'm doing this by myself and this is a lot of work to do by yourself, especially when you're mixing concrete, moving, you know, moving everything around and stuff. So I'm using two pieces of wood as a cross brace with uh, metal strapping to go around the pole. So that way I can line up my pole and get it on the level. So I have a, a magnetic level on the other side connected to the pole. That way I can make sure that this pole is exactly level. This pole right here is not concreted in. But I always do the ends first and then the middles. It works out way easier that way for me. So for me to do this by myself without having anybody else around, I'm just making some support, um, you know, um, support brackets to hold it in place. So if we look at my bubble, 
it's exactly level. If I take this and I rotate the level around the pole, it is exactly the same, exactly level. So I kind of like this little setup I have here because if I need to move the pole over, I can lift up the leg and move it over until I get exactly where I need to be. Then I'll secure it down and then I can go ahead and mix concrete and pour it into the hole. So as you guys can see, this one is done. This one's pour. I actually ran out of daylight, but luckily I was able to put it all in there. There is a ton of concrete in here, guys, a ton. These holes are big. Like this hole goes all the way to the back there because I dug this with a, a mini excavator. And um, when you dig with a mini excavator, obviously you're gonna have a way bigger hole than you would if you're all, you know, have an auger. Um, but we have a lot of rocks out here and stuff. So um, the mini excavator was the best way to go. It made really quick work, but the adverse effect is that it's bigger. It's gonna use more material, but in the end I'm happy because it's solid guys. This thing is super solid. Um, so this is not even um, 24 hours curing yet, but getting close. So what I need to do now, since I just removed all the brackets, because I'm just letting, waiting for it to completely cure. Um, it's solid, I shook it, it's solid. But I need to adjust my bracket, turn it a little bit. Now, these brackets is what's holding those panels on, okay? So this bracket holds the cross. Let me show you guys. I'm sorry if it's hard to hear me guys. I do have a, um, uh, a mic with a dead cat on it, so I'm hoping it's helping. So you guys see the bracket right here? So these are the brackets that's connecting to the vertical pole. This is what anchors to that. And then we have the cross, cross piece here, right? The horizontal piece. That will, that's what all the solar panels are connected to, right? And so we get anchored down with U-bolts. And this is a very nice system. I got this from CuttingEdgePower.com, so definitely check them out. I'm sorry for the wind, guys. Let me get out of the wind for a second so I can at least hopefully talk to you guys. Okay, so those brackets that I was trying to show you are from CuttingEdgePower.com. Um, this was gonna be the best situation for my install. In a sense, it's a ground mount, but it's also not a ground mount. Most ground mounts are very low to the ground, and I didn't want that because we have animals here, right? It's a ranch. So I wanted my animals to be able to walk underneath the solar panels and not have an issue, and that works great. Well, we have some cattle on this side, and we have some sheep on this side, and they just walk right underneath it because they don't even know anything, right? They don't know what's above them, really. But if it was lower to the ground, then I would have to worry about them damaging my panels. And, you know, solar panels are expensive, especially when you get higher in ones or higher wattage ones. Um, so this is the best system for me. Um, so far, it's been able to handle some really crazy wind. I mean, some of the windiest wind that we've had out here, it doesn't even move. So I'm really, really happy with my design as far as putting them into the ground and utilizing the cuttingedgepower.com um, top mounts, okay? When you get the mounts, you get those mounts, you get the U-bolts, okay? And then you also get these right here, channel iron. I mean, um, sorry, unistrut, super strut or unistrut, okay? And let me flip this one over, right? Okay, and that's what connects to the edges of the panel. And then you have your clamps that clamp onto the unistrut that clamp around the um, horizontal pole. So that's what's making this whole system work. So essentially what's connecting everything together is the pipes, obviously, that I purchased separately. And then also the mounting brackets from um, CuttingEdgePower.com. And I'm super glad I went with them as far as the mounting brackets because it's a really nice clean install and it's actually very simple to install as long as you get your mounting situated right um, now because we have high winds where we live this is why I'm going six feet deep and there's a ton of concrete in all of these holes I mean there's a lot of concrete guys um, so that pole is solid she's not gonna go nowhere so I'm gonna adjust that bracket this way I'm gonna reline this one up and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the top pole across this one to this one and I'm gonna put a level on top of the horizontal pole to see how much higher I may need to come because this hole here is actually over six feet deep, right? So what I can do is um, if the pole needs to come up like this, you know, up, 
I can lift this pipe up and I can fill the bottom of the hole until I get to the appropriate height to where my horizontal pole is now completely level. Once that pole is completely level, I'm gonna make sure I secure everything where it's at, make sure that pole um, vertically is level, right? Like this and all that, make sure that's level. And then I can fill this one in with concrete. And then I already have my pole across and um, I have this one concreted in. Then the middle one is really easy because what I can do is, like I've done on the other one is, I'll actually measure the, the exact middle, mount the mount to the horizontal pole, and kind of let it hang in a sense. It's not really hanging, but I kind of got to move the bottom around in the dirt in the hole to kind of get it where I want it. But it, it'll support the pole, so I don't really need the supports on this middle pole once I get the ends in. Because, you know, I'm using the horizontal pole as the, the hanging point, per se to get it where I need to. So I just put the level on, move it around, finagle it, and then once I get it to where I want, I concrete it in and it's done. So, whoo, the wind turbine is doing great today, guys. Awesome, awesome. So anyway, I'm gonna get back to work. I'm not gonna film too much more of me mixing concrete because I already did that earlier in the scenes that you guys have seen. It's very tedious, very labor intensive. So um, I'm definitely gonna be using up the rest of this in the back of the truck for this hole, plus some. So I have some more um, regular bags of concrete um, that I can mix up and throw in there if I need to. So anyway, I'm gonna make more progress, but um, definitely check out cuttingedgepower.com for their, their mounting brackets. Um, that's what I'm using here and they're super solid. All right guys, so I just got done putting the concrete in this pole here that I've been working on. Uh, so we're gonna leave the braces up. I double check with my level just to make sure nothing is moved everything is on the money so we're good there uh so yeah now it's just a matter of once this one cures up and dries i'm gonna address this one here i'm gonna bring the my skidster over here and um attach it to the pole maneuver it and lift it up a little bit um some of these holes got dug way deeper than others like way deeper uh, i'll give you an example like this one here was seven feet something this one here is seven feet something that one over there was six this one over here was like seven and this one is six so i mean usually you know within a foot or so so i will have to adjust this one here but the hole is really big i got tons of concrete going in uh, i just rinsed out my um semi mixer here so that one's all um in there letting it do its thing this one over here is obviously done. This was done um, a day or two ago. So um, it actually drizzled rain a little bit. So it looks like it's wet, but it's not. It's been completely cured. Um, this one is good to go. And I'm like I said, I am using the brackets from cuttingedgepower.com. Um, these are some awesome brackets for something like this. Now I'll give you an example, guys. If I was building this not on a hill, because the slope is like this, guys. It, it doesn't show it in the camera, but if I tilt the camera, to get the slope that's let me see if i can get it for you guys that pole right there not this one this one right here that's this is how much of a slope we're at right so if i was down lower like when i did those super easy because it's not on a hill right but i wanted to put this out of the way up and out of the way um, so a little bit more work and tail, a little bit more headache because you're kind of, you know, you're walking up a grade. This, I, I, re I really wish the camera could show you guys the grade here because, I mean, that's the hill right here behind us. So we're going kind of straight up here. Uh, so over here, it's, it looks lower, but it's not. I have, I have put a level on the top, so that's dead level. Everything is exactly level, guys. I'm very picky about things, especially being level. So um, that pipe that comes across here is going to be holding all the solar panels is 100% level. And then over here, um, we have more space, right? It's just how the ground over here is because we're coming up and it comes down and slopes back up. Um, so this is some heavy duty poles, guys, and a lot of concrete. I mean, this will be here multiple lifetimes. I'll be dead and gone down in the future and this will still be standing. This will be here until either two things happen. Either the poles rot out after God, you know, a hundred years or whatever it may be. Cause this is all um, galvanized, okay? So it's not just steel, galvanized. And the galvanized, you know, it doesn't rust right away. And this metal on this, this is schedule 80, um, three inch pipe right, no, 
schedule 84 inch pipe three or four inch pipe i can't remember already it's been so long um three or four inch pipe here so it's really thick and really heavy duty and then the horizontal piece that's going across there is also schedule 80 um and that is two inch or two and a half inch two inch yeah it's two inch up there um, so you can get the brackets from Cutting Edge Power for different size pipe. So if you don't want to use really big heavy duty pipe like me, uh, you could use a smaller diameter and I believe they sell them in smaller diameters. Um, but you just have to double check. But it's a, it's a really nice, easy, clean setup. I, I, I love it. I love it. You know, the thing is, if you build a wood structure to hold your solar panels, it's not going to last long. You know, it, for a little while, it might look nice and all that, but it's going to rot. It's going to fall apart. It's not as sturdy. This, this is solid, guys. I mean, we've had some like 70 plus mile an hour winds already, guys. And the current ones that I have over here, solid. Don't even budge or move. I mean, it's super solid. But that's also because there's a ton of concrete in the ground. They're really deep um you know that kind of stuff so wind turbine is doing awesome all right so i'm going to close it up here i'm just going to put my tools away um i got to put this bag a little mix of cement here away so it doesn't get wet um this is what i'm left over in the back of the truck here um not much left so i'm going to use the rest of this in that other hole but it's only going to probably fill me up maybe like because the hole is so big it'll probably only fill me up like that much in the bottom of the hole um, but luckily I do have a lot more cement sitting under my house that's already pre-mixed So all I gotta do is add water to it So I'll just throw it in the cement mixer, add water, and then dump it into the hole uh, And then we'll be good to go Now, you guys might be looking at, we have more holes Now originally, even on those, I have more holes Originally I was going to put more pipe, more vertical pipe as a support But after I did that one, and I realized how strong it was it would be super overkill to add any more pipe for the um, vertical rises here. It'd just be super overkill. It's already overkill. So, you know, I don't really need all these other holes, but I did plan for them anyway. So what I'll do is after this project is mostly complete, I'll come back with my um, skidster and I'll push dirt and rocks back into all those holes, compact them down, and then it'll be like nothing ever happened. The grass will grow back over it and that's it. But I did, pr I did plan to have more, but once I installed those, I mean, you can go up to it and try to shake it. It does not move. It is solid, super solid. Even the solar panel sitting on the top, super solid. So I'm very, very happy with my design here and also very happy with the mounting brackets that i'm utilizing from cuttingedgepower.com so definitely check them out for sure definitely worth the the look for sure i mean if you want something solid i mean this is all heavy duty steel guys everything is i mean very heavy duty stuff i mean besides the pipe i bought so you don't get this pipe you don't get the horizontal pipe all you get is the brackets you get the heart i'll show you so you get this bracket with the U-bolts, the nuts and bolts, right? Of course, to mount everything together for, to your pipes. And then you get all the... I believe, I, I believe they're still selling them with all the vertical pipe for the, um, the super strut or unistrut here. That's what's actually connecting to the side, the long ways of the solar panel that gets connected with its brackets. So let me show you guys here. I mean, look how much concrete is in all this. It's crazy. So here is the solar panel, right? Right here. And then that's the bracket right here. That's that unistrut. And then it comes with the nuts and bolts to go inside. And then it comes with the clamps. So that way you can clamp the unistrut to the two inch pipe here. And these are all super tight. So now um, <coughs> I do have this wired up and working right now. Okay. Um, but this is only temporary right because I have all my solar panels off the ground and I need to keep my batteries charged so um, this is temporary I do have my underground conduit right here so once I finish installing the solar panels up here I already ran the underground conduit over there so now it's just a matter of branching everything up and then cleaning up all the wires sending them back down through the conduit and um, we're good to go see here's all the conduit I gotta finish covering up this pipe. But what I wanna do is, I need to make a little trench right here to come up this pole. And then I'll backfill all this and I'll make the bends to come around and come up. And then we'll have a little junction box to run all the wires into and then down the pipe 
goes underground, goes all the way around, and it goes into the um, to the com combiner here that I made. I have a video on how I made this, so definitely check it out. Um, all super wide, watertight connections, so all the lines will come in here. They get consolidated down, and then they go into. Of, of course, I'm not done, right? So it goes into the uh, the breakers for the you know combination here, and then from there it goes into the um, back into the building for you know the solar charge controller. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll give you guys more footage as we come along here. We're making progress for sure. A lot of hard work though. But definitely worth it in the end, guys. All right, so I mounted the first um, set of Unistrut or Super Strut to that first panel already. It's over there. I'm getting ready to do the next one here. Um, but I want to show you like, guys the hardware that comes with this. So let me open, fold this over. So as you guys can see, CuttingEdgePower.com. It's a solid product. I, I, I really like it. Um, so here's all the clamps that's going to connect around the horizontal pole that's going to connect to the um, super strut. So see these little hooks? That's what hooks into the panels and then you just go ahead and tighten down the um, nut and bolt really tight and that's going to secure it to there. And it, it's actually very, very strong, believe it or not, very strong. So um, for every panel it takes two of these, it takes two. Um, unistruts for each side so that's that um, here's the u-bolts right here right um, this is for mounting the base plate the ones that you see up there right now the black ones to the vertical pole first and then the horizontal pole and then here's all the hardware for mounting the super strut or unistrut to the actual solar panel we have our you know all our miscellaneous um, hardware here so we have some nuts in there bolts in here uh, and then washers over here so the way this works is it's pretty sim simple and straightforward um, for every bolt it takes two washers one washer you know you slide on first you push it through then you put a washer on the back side and then put the nut on and then go ahead and tighten it down so maybe I'll show you guys when I put the next rails on this one, how it all kind of comes together. But this is the hardware that makes everything happen. And of course, those brackets up there. Um, I might have another bracket loose someplace if I can find one. Uh, I do, but let me, um, and then in the next clip, I'll show you guys what those brackets look like, but they're just those black ones, but they work very well. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys the hardware going into the Unistrut. So I'm going to put this one on, but um, this one just got mounted. So it's just very, very simple, guys. Um, you know, nut, bolt, two washers. Uh, that's it. And then on this side, you guys can see right here, right? Uh, what I do is I make sure I count my... I want to make sure everything is lined up perfect, right? Um, so all my Unistrut, I cut in a certain way. So I count one, two, three notches down slide the, the nut and bolt, I mean the bolt in, uh, and then down here it'll automatically line up into the other one over here. Then I loosely put everything on and then I actually use my foot right here at the bottom and lift up on the unistrut to slide it up. That way everything's gonna have the equal distance from up here, you know, and all that. So really simple and it's really strong. Uh, so, and you, you know, of course, if you always want to add more than just the two, you could drill another hole because it's only the side frame, right? You, that's all they do is drill a hole anyway. So you can drill a hole right through this right here and put another um, nut and bolt if you wanted to. So that would be up to you. Um, but with the setup I currently have on the other ones going through some really high winds, uh, it doesn't even move. It's like perfect. So I'm going to continue what I'm doing. So let me put the next rail on, slide that panel up there to be mounted. Uh, up there and then um, I'll show you guys putting the clamps on here on the um, actual solar, solar panels and clamping down the first couple panels and we'll keep moving forward this system is very simple to put up guys I really like this because it's straightforward you know it, everything comes in a kit and you know everything is very heavy duty I, I believe all their products is USA made um, so you know that's one good thing to think about too so anyway let me get back to work All right, so I have the first panel on this array um, temporarily mounted. I just kind of got it up there. It's kind of windy as you guys can see, so I'm trying to hold it and um, all that stuff. So I got it secured, so at least it's not gonna go nowhere now. 
Um, but what I wanna do is take my measurement long way so I can get this, make sure this is dead center. You know, the pivot point is dead center on the um, horizontal pole there. Uh, and then once that's done, then I can go ahead and make sure I cinch it. You know, it's tight right now, but uh, I wanna position it to where it's gonna be dead center all the way down all the um, solar panels. So I'll move it around to get exactly where I need to be and then re-tighten everything back up. And then I can continue now to the next one because I can use the first panel as a reference as I come along. Now, the other thing is too, once I'm done mounting all these panels, I'm gonna go ahead and wash them and clean them all up because I've been drag dragging them around in the dirt and everything. But I want to show you guys the the mounting. So this is the clamp, right? It clamps into the Unistrut on this side and on that side right there. And then it clamps down onto the pole with a nut and bolt. Uh, and then you just go ahead and um, cinch that tight. I'm using my uh, Milwaukee um, ratchet there. Really makes quick work of things. And so here's the other side, same thing, right? Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the next panel right here. My next bracket will be right here. It'll overlap this. Then my joint will be down here and I'll continue so forth. And then once I get to the middle there, I can move around a little bit on the, uh, the pole there. Because two of these poles here on the end is more than enough to support this weight. That's not an issue. This middle pole is just to give a little bit of extra support and for where we live, the wind. So over here we have three poles on this one here, right? Um, so same theory here but once i kind of get past that right there um, i can go ahead and center up this pipe get it where i need to be and then i'll go ahead and throw the concrete in that today as well um, i did put a level on every single pole is exactly level um, the, this pipe up here is exactly level so everything is level so then i'll go ahead and wash the panels off and all that clean them up after i get them all mounted um, but yeah first panel mounted out of the array here so let me go ahead and take my measurement to make sure that this is dead center in this area here. And then once I get this first panel squared away, the rest go in really easy because all I'm doing now is lining up the panel with the next panel, you know, front and back. And then what I'm using is a, where is it? Oh, it's down there. I'm using a um, clamp to clamp them together to hold them in place. So that way I don't have to worry about it falling over while I put my brackets on. So the first one is, you, if you're doing this by yourself like I am, the first one is the most hectic one because you know, you're just trying to get it up there. But once you get the first one set and lined up, then it's just a matter of clamping the next one to this one and then put your bracket on, remove your clamps and work down the line. So uh, let me get back to work here and I'll show you guys putting the next panel on um, with the next brackets and the clamps. All right, so the second panel I just slid up. And what I did was I made sure it was flush here and flush on the top. And I put my clamp across to clamp this together. And I just went down there with my hand and made sure it was nice and tight. So that way, you know, this is gonna help secure it a little bit better. I'm gonna put another clamp over here to squeeze it together. Um, that way I can actually put the next set of um, mounting brackets in and I can move down the line. So this is how I mount my solar panels, guys. Pretty straightforward. The first one is just the one that you have to get lined up dead center because I did do that already. I made sure that the, the length of the actual solar panel, I divided the length in half and I lined it up directly in the middle of here. So that's how I'm doing this. So as you guys can see, the next bracket will go right here. 